Okay, so why in an inverted gradient stack like this, why would you reverse the top sub or the bottom sub? Does it really matter? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So I am recovering from COVID, so I hope my voice sounds okay. It feels a little bit weak and scratchy, but I wanted to go ahead and do this video anyway. Yeah, so I set up this array for the show, and then someone asked me, hey, why do you do it like this? Is there a reason? And yes, there is a reason. And the short answer, I'll just tell you now, is that I'm trying to get a cancel to go this way. So the shortcut to figuring out which one to reverse, there's various different reasons why you might design a subwoofer array the way you want it. But one of the characteristics you can look at is where do I want to put the cancel? Where do I want to put the sum? And this is one of those characteristics you can look at. And so if you line up the drivers, so the drivers in this box are over here and over here. And if you line up those drivers, then that's where you're going to put the cancel. And in my case, that's about where the microphones are. So let's look at how this works. So here in Map3D, I have the same setup here. And if I rotate this around a bit, you can see I have the top sub reversed. So if I zoom back out now, and let's go back to a perfect left-hand view, and I hit predict at 63 hertz, we should expect to see a cancel that is in the direction of those drivers. And that's what we get, right? So the drivers are lined up like this, right? And we get a cancel in that direction. Here's that cancel. And then we get a sum in this direction. By the way, if you don't know anything about two element gradient arrays, I have an introductory video where I walk you through it step by step, and I'll link to that below this video. So this is just another flavor of a gradient array. Oftentimes you use it when you don't have enough real estate to do the inline version of the gradient array. Okay, so this is when you have the top one reversed. And now let's look at when you have the bottom one reversed. Think about what you expect to see. Now the drivers have been rotated 180 degrees, right? Sorry, other direction. I know that was correct. So they're aligned like this and we expect to see a cancel down that way. So you can use this in your de designs depending on how your speakers are going to end up placed. Where do I want to put less sound? Where do I want to put more sound? So I'm going to show you another variation of this in a second. But you might be wondering, what about the floor reflection? What I could do is I could just double this array and make this array twice as long. And then we would see the effect of what it would be like if there were a floor here and the floor acts like a mirror. But instead, I'll just open Map XT. It's a little bit faster to just turn on the floor, basically. So here we have the same array. And I've put an example microphone here. And before I enable the boundary, the bottom boundary, I'll just prove to you that it looks the same as in Map3D. So here's Map3D. Let's go back to the top reversed element, predict. Okay, so there's our cancel. And here we are, just a closer up version. And we've got the cancel back here. You just don't see as much of it. So think about what's going to happen when I turn on the floor. We're going to get two more illusory subs below here because the floor acts like a mirror, right? So if these guys are canceling this way, then these guys are going to cancel this way and we can expect it to change our coverage pattern here. Enable, predict. Maybe I should have taken a picture of that before. So let's turn that back off. Predict, take a picture. Turn that boundary back on. Okay, so we can see it, it screws up our cancellation back there quite a bit. Of course, this is all an estimation, and uh, there may be even more walls, even more boundaries, but it's just good to have an idea of what that floor might do. So when you look down here, for example, we've got pretty much the same color all the way back here that we do where the microphone is. But here, where the microphone is lime, we make it much less distance. But we are still getting a cancel in the direction of the microphone, 
which is what I was going for. And I'm assuming you could optimize this more in the field, depending on exactly where your microphones are. As we can see in Map3D here, this array really gets optimized by the time it gets back here somewhere. We can see it get, getting better and better as it gets farther away. But if you were to calibrate this array for a specific position, which is what I did here, to make it work out a little bit better for the demo, I actually calibrated it right here so that they match in level and phase before you do that in polarity inversion on the rear facing sub, then you can try to set it up so that you have a better cancel at a specific position. And of course that's gonna affect your forward summation, but I'm just talking you through some options here. So now that you understand this, and you understand that you're gonna have a cancel in the direction that these drivers are aligned if you drew a line through there. Now let's go back to this original image. And so now you understand a little bit better why I was thinking, hey, I'll set up a cancel in this direction and hopefully get less low frequency energy onto all these microphones here. So now take a look at this. So this was in the same week in the same city. I didn't do the design for this system. I just helped out. I was just the stagehand. And I didn't even talk to the person who installed it, but you can imagine already what they're thinking. If they are thinking about where to put the cancel, then they're lining up this driver up here and this driver back here. And so they're trying to get that cancel to go towards the stage. And so you can even imagine if we go back to map 3D here, that you might set this up this way. So this is what's happening in that image is that the stage is over here. And so he's got his two arrays to the side trying to get sound out this way and less sound on the stage here. Okay, so while this might look wrong at first, you're like, hey, you're supposed to stack those up or you're supposed to put them one behind the other. There's all different ways you can set this up to get different kinds of results. And this is what that stage looked like. And here are those arrays. So if this interests you and you wanna go much deeper into it, I learned about all of this from Mauricio Ramirez. And he gave a presentation at a recent Live Sound Summit that is all about gradient arrays. And he goes through many variations, and I think it's almost two and a half hours long. So if you're interested in this subject, I definitely recommend it. I will put a link to that below this video. All right, I hope this was helpful for you, and let me know what questions came up for you.